policeman growled, sounding more animal than human, and something changed in his features. His eyes glowed amber, an extremely inhuman face. What the? She lurched back, her nose twitched at an odd scent, and dizziness emerged. Now wasn't the time for her heart to hamper reality. This has got to be the weirdest panic attack. No attack unless you refuse, the man inched closer. Touch me and I'll call repent on your chest. Rebo fumbled at her belt, grasping the bone handle of her switchblade. She never actually used it on anyone. Never wanted to. All we want is the vessel, he warned. There's no need for it to go there. You don't want it to go there, said another. Shadows moved out from behind the man. A young female appeared, followed by a male version of her, both cloaked in animal hide coats. The twins' blood-red hair spilled over their shoulders, like lion's manes. The girl's pelt trimmed in fur of equal shade. As they moved between one second and the next, they shifted into a wave of rippling fur. Bones snapped out of place, and jet-black muzzles emerged from their faces, until they formed into four-footed shapes. Their backs contorted, and slowly bone plates elongated down their spines like an armadillo's shield. They were not human, not even close. Werewolves, she voiced it out loud. Lycanthrope, the man corrected. His eyes burned like embers as his ears tapered skyward, and his vastness seemed to increase compared to the others. Obviously the Alpha. A thief knows a thief, as a wolf knows a wolf, he said. Didn't legends ever teach you about the big bad one? Rebel felt her blood steal. Her mind faltered trying to explain what it was seeing. She hoarded enough books speaking of the skinwalker tales, shapeshifters and phantom black dogs. But none like this. Those weren't real. They were poetic fabrication. Fictional legends, fantasies which didn't exist. Because the real monsters of the world wore human faces. She had always thought her books were safer than people. But not when they had come to life. Her heart wasn't playing tricks on her. Nor had it in Skinner's shop. This was real enough for Rebel. It gave her insides a rattle. A chain reaction flogging her body with a spark. Flight or flight. Her fear batted away to let her brain take over. She angled her body to retreat. A switchblade clenched in her hand. The twin wolves crouched, their armor-like spines rippling as guttural noises rose from their throats. If there was one thing Rebel excelled at more than lockpicking, it was escaping. One darting eye caught a glimpse of the alpha man making a move on the verge of lunging into the air, and Rebel bolted. Oh.